For the past year, I have been using 75 ohm cable television RG6 coax cable in my amateur radio station. I'd like to take the next few minutes to discuss why you perhaps would consider using RG6 in your amateur radio station. I've made a pros and cons list based on my experience using RG6 in my station over the last year. Throughout this video, I'm going to be comparing RG6 to RG213. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you want to use 50 ohm coax, that's going to perform better than RG675 ohm coax in your station, you're going to have to purchase RG213. That's how good the performance of RG6 is, and that's the first pro on our list. It has great performance and low loss, comparable to RG213 for about a quarter of the price. Let's take a look at some numbers here, and I've created these using a coax loss calculator from kv5r.com. 100 feet of feed line with an antenna SWR of 1.5. If we're using RG6 at 14 megahertz, we're gonna have 1.1 dB of loss. RG213, 0.74 dB of loss. So that's, that's almost unnoticeable between the two. Let's look at the very top ceiling of the HF spectrum in the US, 30 megahertz, we're gonna have one, one and a half dB of loss with RG6. RG213, we're gonna have 1.1 dB of loss. So what does that mean? If we're transmitting 100 watts with RG6 on 30 megahertz, 100 feet, we're still gonna get about 71 watts worth of power out to the antenna. Compare that to RG213, 77.53 watts. Six and a half watts, four times the price. You know, it's, it's, RG6 is pretty good. Let's look at the top of the two meter VHF band in the US, 148 megahertz. If we're putting 50 watts into 100 feet of RG6, we're still gonna get 22 watts out on the other end. Compare that to RG213, you're gonna get 26.5 watts, five watt difference uh, in VHF. Again, really good. So this makes it great for certain things like longer runs of coax. That's what I use it for at my station. I have about an 80 foot run that goes from the transceiver in my house out to the Delta Loop antenna over my garage. And I got direct burial rated cable. I think I paid $33 for it. And that's the premium stuff that you could find. RG6 is excellent for receive only antennas like your beverage or loop on ground antennas because of its low attenuation. And there's a wide variety of cables readily available and cheaply like direct burial, UV resistant, riser rated, quad shield. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can get in RG6. If RG6 is so great, why isn't everybody using it in their station? Well, let's go to the cons, because there are some drawbacks to using it in your station. There's a popular opinion amongst hams that RG6 can't handle any power. You should use it receiving only, you can't transmit into it. And that's not true. Let's take a look at this chart. This chart I found from owenduffy.net. There's actually a lot of really interesting information about RG6 and other coaxes on this website. Let's take these numbers with a grain of salt because this is just one source of information here. So according to this chart, it is true that RG6 will handle less power than RG213, and that makes sense. We're, going, we're comparing a $110 cable to a $20 cable, so there has to be some reason for the cost difference, and it seems to be in the power handling capabilities. Again, let's assume some numbers. We're contesting in Morse code on the 15 meter band at 21 megahertz. Our SWR of our antenna is two to one. If we were using RG213 coax, we're good up and beyond legal limit power. However, if we were using RG6 in the same circumstance, we would be limited at about 825 watts. Now keep in mind, this is the thermal limit of the cable. This isn't the explode, bang, everything goes crazy, uh, short circuit voltage. This is the thermal limit, so if we start putting more power than this, the cable's gonna heat up, the impedance characteristics are gonna change, our SWR is gonna go crazy, no good. So what does this mean for new cheap hams like us that are just trying to get some cheap coax and get our stations on the air? I would say limit your power to 100 watts or less if you're using RG6 coax. Anecdotally, I can attest to the fact that RG6 will handle 100 watts of whatever you wanna put into it. You can transmit 100 watt FT8 into RG6 as much as you want. I've done it, it's fine, I haven't had a problem. So for the sake of this video, even though it theoretically maybe might have half the power handling of RG213, let's just say if you're gonna use RG6, 100 watts or less. Another drawback of using RG6 in your station is the braided shield is typically gonna be aluminum on the cheap cable, and that's why we're using it, is because it's cheap. 
So you can't solder to it, but there's plenty of ways to deal with this. Super simple. You could just use a mechanical, con uh, a mechanical connector, like a Wago or a wire nut, something like that. You could use ring terminals, crimps. It's really not a problem. Another drawback of using RG6 cable is you're gonna have to install your own PL259 connectors. An easy workaround is just purchasing one of these. This is a PL259 to type F adapter. This would allow you to adapt the existing type F connectors on your RG6 cable to PL259 connectors to plug into your radio or to your antenna. But installing your own PL259 connectors gives you a lot of flexibility and it's really easy to do. I learned how to do this from this video by Robert Sumpton. This is ancient knowledge at this point. This video is 11 years old at the time of this video's creation. So check out Robert's video, give him a like. The first thing that you're gonna need is a PL259 connector that's sized for larger coax, like RG213. You're also gonna need a razor blade, electrical tape, tin snips or something to cut your coax with, two pliers to tighten everything up, and your coax. You're gonna to wanna to get this style of PL259 connector, the one with the adapter for smaller coax. And the reason is that adapter screws into these threads on the bottom, and these threads on the bottom are what's gonna help us put this onto the RG6. Cut the Type F connector off of your coax. I'm sizing up the PL259 connector against the coax, and I'm making sure that there is going to be enough center conductor poking out of the end. I'm just marking with my thumb here where I'm going to cut the outer rubber sheath with the razor knife. And after just putting a little cut around, you kind of give it a wiggle and it comes right off. Next, you take the braid and peel the braid back over the insulation. I size up with my connector again just to figure out where I have to cut the dielectric insulation. Again, I'm gonna mark with my thumb and just cut the dielectric with a razor knife. So this next part is going to differ depending on your individual cable. You're gonna to have to put a few wraps of either electrical tape or duct tape around the insulation. This differs per cable and if it's got extra shielding, we're gonna start with four wraps of electrical tape and you can see I'm wrapping it right up against the end of the insulation cut that we made. So we're gonna start with four wraps and we'll see how this is. If it's too loose, we're gonna to have to add more wraps. If it's too tight, we're gonna to have to take some wraps off. So you can see how easily this goes on. That's a little too loose. It's not threading itself on. We're gonna add two more wraps. So we already have four wraps of electrical tape on here. We're gonna add two more. This is gonna bring us up to a total of six wraps of electrical tape. You can see that's a much better fit. The threads are actually biting into the braid and the electric tape and the connector is threading itself on. And this is the moment that I realized I forgot to put the collar on. Rookie mistake. At this point, I like to take two pliers, hold the coax with one plier and use the other plier to finish threading the connector on. When you're satisfied that you've made up the connector deep enough and it's a nice, good connection to the coax, trim the XX braid that's sticking out behind the connector, and then I try to give it one or two more turns to make sure that all of that extra braid material is underneath the body of the connector. Now to finish up, just like putting a PL259 on any other coax, we solder the center pin and we're finished. One of the more interesting problems that you might run into if you're using 75 ohm coax is that it's 75 ohms. Using 75 ohm coax on a 50 ohm transmitter and a 50 ohm antenna can produce some weird effects. For instance, my main antenna at my home station is a delta loop resonant on 20 meters. I had originally built and tuned this antenna using 50 ohm feed line. When I swapped out the 50 ohm feed line, for RG6 75 ohm feed line, it made my delta loop antenna electrically shorter. So it became resonant at a higher frequency than it was before. My original delta loop was 70 feet long. After feeding it with 75 ohm coax, I had to lengthen it by five and a half feet 
So it became 75.5 feet long. And that brought my resonance back down to the middle of the 20 meter band. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is something unique to Delta Loop antennas, because if you look up plans online to build a Delta Loop, they will include a 75 ohm coax matching stub in it to change the impedance to work for your radio. I didn't build it like that. I, bu I just built a four to one ballon to feed it instead of using the 75 ohm matching stub. So adding 75 ohm coax is, is doing some sort of impedance changing thing going on. But if you're gonna save $75 just using RG6, it's not a deal breaker. If you're gonna create an antenna, perhaps just leave yourself a little extra room, some extra length on the antenna to trim it down. And if you're gonna be using an existing antenna that you've tuned to work with 50 ohm coax, just expect you, there might be some funky things going on with it. And the last thing that I wanna discuss is your minimum SWR using 75 ohm coax is going to be 1.5 if you don't have a tuner built into the radio or use one separately. 75 ohm coax divided by 50 ohm transceiver gives you a 1.5 SWR. If you're one of those obsessive hams that really likes their SWR to get down, they, you don't wanna see anything on that bar on your radio, this isn't the coax for you because if you're not using a tuner, you're, the lowest you're gonna get is 1.5. For me, that's not a problem. I'm kind of one of those hams where as long as there's not smoke coming out of the radio, I'm gonna transmit into it, but just something to be aware of. 75 ohm RG6 coax, give it a shot. What do you have to lose? It's not gonna destroy your equipment and it's super cheap. Pick up some cheap coax. You probably have some of it lying around your house anyway. Pick up one of these adapters or pick up some uh, PL259s, throw them on there. Give it a shot at your home station. Maybe it'll work out for you. Maybe it'll help you save some money like it did me. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Steve, KD2WTU73.